Welcome, uh, everyone, to the field test demo of the EPB microgrid. Uh, this is a result of the RPE sponsored uh, project for the last five years. In addition to uh, UTK and EPB, uh, we also have other partners, uh, uh, National Instruments, APRI, TVA, and uh, Green Energy Corp. Uh, today, um, uh, I will be moderating. Uh, my name is Fred Wang. I'm the project lead. Uh, together, we have several presenters, Jim Glass uh, from EPB, uh, Mike Su, Ham Zhang, and Henry Yin from UTK. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, uh, please uh, uh, hold off until the end, and you are also welcome to uh, type your question in the chat box. We will try to answer uh, during the, the, the demo. Uh, with that, uh, let me turn to uh, Jim. All right. <clears throat> okay. Um, I'll give you a little background on the project before we jump into the demo. Um, this is an aerial shot of the area served by the microgrid. The purple circuit that you see there is circuit number 215 from our Shepherd substation. The blue circles represent uh, normally closed switches on that feeder, and the beige circles represent normally open switches that tie to, um, to other feeders or other circuits. The Chattanooga Airport installed about 2.7 megawatts of solar PV several years ago on the west side of the runway, and it connects directly into EPB's 12 kV system. Then as part of this project, uh, EPB installed a battery system and a natural gas generator that are adjacent to the solar PV, and they can be combined with the solar PV in, in support of a microgrid. The primary goal of this project was to develop the capability for a microgrid controller to manage the dynamic boundaries of the microgrid based on the available generation resources. This capability might be a little easier to see on a on a schematic diagram. So let's go to the next page, please. All right. This shows the normal circuit configuration. The substation breaker is on the far left inside the, the circle there, or the, um, and then the DER is on the far right of the diagram, all, all in the same load section. The automated switches that were installed as part of EPB's distribution automation program improve the reliability by about 40% by providing automatic fault isolation and service restoration capability. The closed switches can be open to isolate a fault, and then the open switches can be closed to connect to an alternate power supply. The uh, distribution automation implementation also created the ability for operating microgrids on our distribution system using available DER. Um, like I mentioned, all the DER in this case are located in one load section on the far right that's bounded by automated switches. All right, next please. In the case of a significant weather event or a TBA power supply event, the distribution automation is unable to provide an alternate supply because it, it's, it's not available from one of the adjacent feeders. In this scenario, we can utilize the DA switches to create a microgrid boundary using the DER from the airport to provide the power supply. The microgrid controller would determine the appropriate boundary switches for the initial black start, which is shown here in the, in the green circle where we would, would isolate to just a small area to, uh, to initialize the, the microgrid. And then if you'll expand to the next or change to the next slide, this shows the expanded boundary that can be used to serve more customers when the solar PV is producing a larger amount. So that's the general concept of the, the dynamic boundary. All right. Okay, uh, thank you, Jim. And to fully leverage the flexibility that's brought by the smart switches, um, we have designed and developed a scalable and open source microgrid central controller um, based on National Instruments, Compact Real, and LabVIEW platform. We also innovated uh, unique functions crucial for the operation of this uh, flexible microgrid, 
uh, include the online topology identification, relay coordination, PQ balance, reconnection, and energy management. We also realized uh, the other functions that are an uh, integral parts of the controller, uh, including the finite state machine, communication, uh, state estimation, PV and load forecasting, uh, as well as data logging. We also uh, established the communication path to uh, uh, back and forth from uh, SCADA and also to the local controllers uh, of the DER. And now I'd like to uh, walk you through the field test we will be showing today. This is an islanded microgrid test that uh, took place uh, in the morning of October the 20th from 5.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. Uh, we try to minimize the disruption in the customer service in the area. So uh, this, uh, we try to schedule this in the early morning. And the screenshot you, you're seeing is the SCADA one-line diagram of the Shepherd 215 feeder. And the uh, area enclosed by the red dashed lines is the maximum area served by the microgrid during the test. So we have opened a manual switch before the test to include some more residential load here. And this is the area with the microgrid airport uh, runway loads and the DERs uh, that uh, are part of the microgrid. And uh, we uh, opened this switch here and closed this switch here to pick up uh, this entire load section during our boundary expansion uh, that happened at uh, 8.30 a.m. And then we reconnected the microgrid area back to the EPB um, distribution system at uh, 8.47 a.m. Okay, so uh, now here comes the fun part of the, this demonstration. Uh, we will be showing a video of screen recordings of our controller's uh, graphical user interface, uh, as well as the SCADA one-line diagram. So let's start off with the black start. Uh, we initiate the black start from the SCADA side where the operator can um, click uh, through a few buttons uh, to the top right. And then a uh, communication uh, data point is sent to the micro signal controller through the DMP3 communication we have set up. And on the controller side, uh, we will try to break down the uh, steps to show what's involved in the process. So first step, we receive the request from the SCADA and we confirm uh, the reception of uh, the request, obtain the control authority of the microgrid area, and we will uh, confirm internally that the microgrid is in the outage state. So uh, we can also see the indicator um, to the uh, right of the graphical user interface. And then we will try to um, connect the grounding transformer, uh, uh, which will provide a grounding source to the islanded microgrid. And then we uh, will send the starting command to the two um, battery energy storage systems. They will start in sequence in grid forming mode. So while we wait for the batteries to come online, uh, allow me to briefly introduce this controller interface. So in the middle, we, we have the one-line diagram of the microgrid area. We follow the conventional color scheme where green is de-energized and red is energized. In the bottom left, we show the uh, power measurements of the microgrid sources. Uh, they are not shown yet because the microgrid area is still de-energized. To its right, we display the load measurements and uh, the uh, current status of the microgrid signal controller. So now we already see that the batteries, the battery one is already online and battery two should be started shortly. And after uh, the microgrid is energized, we uh, change the relay setting profiles of the smart switches in the microgrid, uh, which are the S3120 and S3446 uh, from the grid uh, connected profile to the islanded profile. And um, the battery should uh, start uh, any minute now. And after that, the, we will try to start the backup generator uh, in the grid following mode. 
So, uh, which means we provide the active power reference to the generator um, and also the power uh, um, Okay, now that the second battery is started and uh, um, we'll try to start the uh, generator, we can see the status here. Um, it just uh, switched from uh, starting to running. So the uh, generator has been started successfully and uh, the black start sequence is completed. And now we will see the same procedure again from the scalar point of view. Uh, we have made it, uh, made changes to the video to uh, cut out uh, most of the waiting time. So now that the um, grounding transformer is connected, shown in uh, by the red box here, uh, we will try to start the um, battery shown here. Uh, battery one has just been started. We can see the power output of the battery um, um, here. We can also tell that the microgrid is energized uh, through the voltage measurements uh, taken by the interrupters uh, shown to the left and right of each interrupter. So now uh, we are trying to start uh, the second battery, uh, which will come online shortly. Uh, and then um, the backup generator will be started. So this is the area that we are um, starting. So it includes the um, airport runway loads and some uh, residential loads uh, to the right of uh, switch S3120. Okay, uh, now the second battery has been started and the backup generator should be started soon. We will keep operating uh, in the island mode uh, while waiting for the PV output to ramp up as the sun rises and then when the PV reaches uh, a critical uh, output, we will uh, expand the microwave boundary, uh, which will be demonstrated in the following sequence. All right, thanks, Mike. After the black start, the PV balance will enable real-time power, power balancing in the island microgrid. In this demo, the central controller will expand the boundary by picking up the next available set load section which is section four, as the PV generation ramps up in the morning. In order to reduce service interruption to low section four, it was connected to the distribution feeder until the dynamic boundary testing started. The operator now disconnects low section four from the feeder manually by opening the switch Y1611 through SCADA. Uh, so now low section four has been dropped from the feeder and is available to be picked up by the microgrid. The PQ balance function actively mon monitors the active and reactive power balance in the microgrid in real time. As the PV generation starts to ramp up in the morning, the power from the battery energy storage system will decrease and then start being charged. The PV generation started from zero when we begin, began the test and now it's outputting around the 40 kilowatt. Once the charging power reaches the threshold, the microgrid central controller will initiate the boundary expanding process. The LED indicator expanding in the PQ balance indicator box on top of the circuit diagram will come on. In this demo, the next available section will be load section four. The boundary change process includes five steps. First, the boundary expanding or shrinking is initiated by the PQ balance function. Step two is to confirm the switch on the other side is open, which in this case is switch Y1611, and to make sure its auto restoration is disabled. Then the MGCC will disable the grounding relay on the boundary switch S3446. After that, the switch is ready to be closed. Once it's closed, the MGCC will wait for five more seconds before re-enabling the grounding relay on the switch to avoid unwanted tripping of the switch during the, during the transient. The boundary expansion is completed after the grounding relay is re-enabled. 
the whole expanding process above will be finished very quickly in a few seconds once it's initiated. The status of the operation will be displayed in the current operation description box on the bottom right. Now in the Pico Bounce function indicator box, the dynamic boundary function is enabled as indicated by the green rectangular LED light. Once the battery start charging power reaches the threshold because of the PV generation, the expanding process will be initiated and the corresponding square LED expanding will come on. Okay, now the boundary expanding is initiated. The expa expanding sequence will be finished very quickly. The switch has been closed. The MGCC is waiting for five seconds to re-enable the grounding relay as indicated in the description box. Okay, the grounding relay is re-enabled and boundary change is finished. We will see more details in the EPV SCADA recording. It can be noticed that indicator G near the switch S3446 turned green, which is the grounding relay being disabled. Soon after that, the green box representing the switch turned red, indicating the closing of the switch. After five seconds, the grounding relay was turned back on, indicated by the G indicator turning red again. Thank you, Ham. This is Henry, and I will introduce the reconnection section. During the reconnection, the SCADA will first confirm the boundary switch, which is Y1611, and other tiebreakers are open. Then the metal grid central controller will check if current metal grid state is islanded. We can check this from the metal grid state indicator on the right. Next, the metal grid central controller will start to shut down the backup generator. We can observe the current generator static changes from running to cool down and finally to off. After shutting down the generator, the microwave central controller will start to shut down batteries. We can observe the battery statics change from islanded to waiting to start, which indicates the batteries are off. Yes. After 10 seconds, switch 3120 and S3446 will be tripped by loss of voltage relay. Then in step four, the microwave central controller will disconnect grounding transformer. We can observe the grounding transformer de-energize from the GUI. Then um, uh, when we are waiting for the grounding transformer, I will introduce step five. The microwave central controller will change the relay settings of S3446 and S3120 from island to normal sighting so that the grid can pick up those sections five and seven from the left direction. This operation cannot be observed from the GUI. Finally, the microwave central controller will report the reconnection is complete and the transform the control circuit back to the SCADA. On SCADA side, it will close the Y1611, S3446, and S3120 one by one. We can see the switch operation from microgrid GUI as well. Yeah, it closed the uh, switch Y1611 first followed by S3446, and finally S3120. Yeah, that's the end of the GUI side. If we look from the SCADA GUI, we can look at the general power and the battery power, which indicate their current statics. First, the generator power will reduce to zero, which indicates the generator is shut down. Then the battery's power will reduce to zero, which means batteries are shut down. After that, uh, S3446 and S3120 will open due to the loss of voltage relay. After microgrid central controller change the relay sighting and give back the control authority to the SCADA, the SCADA will close the, these three switches. First, the Y1611, then the switch 3446 and S3120. We can wait on for a while. Okay, now the Y1611 has been closed by SCADA. The next one is S3446. Okay, it is done. The final one is S3120. Yes, and that is the end of the reconnection. Oh, uh, 
Thank you, uh, Jim, Mike, uh, Ham, and Henry for the presentation. Um, so that's the uh, end of the demo. Um, with that, I, I would like to acknowledge uh, our sponsors, uh, Upper E and uh, also uh, Current. Uh, I also want to uh, thank uh, our program directors, uh, Maria Garcia and uh, Magiana um, Martin, and also uh, Richard Wilson um, for their uh, continued support. Uh, we, we are lucky to have them uh, here today. Uh, with that, uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, we still have some time uh, for that. Uh, so feel free to unmute yourself and uh, ask questions, or you can type it in the chat box. Uh, good morning. This is uh, Paul Sturgeo from Con Edison. Uh, I have a question. Hi, Paul. Uh, you mentioned that it was a 20, 22 kV feeder. Uh, the the inverters from the uh, battery and the PVs. Uh, you, I'm assuming you use step up transformers. Uh, did you use delta Y transformers? What type of transformers were used to step up the voltage from the inverters? I'm assuming the inverter was a 480 out output delta. That's correct. Yeah, the the number one, the feeder is 12 kV, not 22. But you're correct. We have 480 volt um, inverters delta and the transformers that uh, for the step up to the 12 kV are delta Y. Uh, so so the, all the transformers were delta Y. Why did you install an additional grounding transformer? Uh, it's because the the there was not a grounding path from the uh, from the batteries through the transformer. That that was the purpose of the grounding transformer. We needed a we needed a ground source in the case of a fault. Uh, so yeah, the, actually, that is a critical piece for this type of uh, for this type of microgrid. Uh, we would be happy to explain even more later uh, on that. Uh, you know, if you have further questions on that. Sure. So you're saying the protection. Of the inverter is on the secondary side, on the 480 side? Yes, for the inverter themselves, right. So this grounding transformer is really for protection of the rest of the microgrid equipment, just providing the force path, current path uh, for the ground fault. Uh, there are some uh, other questions. Yeah, final report. Uh, uh, yeah, the project is uh, going to be finished this year, so the final report will be uh, available probably sometime next spring. Any other questions? Uh, if you have further questions, uh, my email is uh, listed here, so feel free to contact us. Uh, the other piece of info is uh, we will be uh, uh, upload this uh, video to a public uh, website, and uh, so you can uh, look at it later uh, if you have further need. Oh, no, I think there is a question. Uh, in the chat box regarding the uh, rating of the grounding transformer. Um, the grounding transformer is actually a three um, 100 kVA um, um, transform, uh, transformer banks. We did have a, a, size, a sizing uh, together with uh, EPV to try to determine the, um, the capacity needed for the grounding transformers.
Okay, there is another question. Uh, you are all looking at the dynamic boundary based on periodic. Are you also considering impact cloudy day? Uh, yes, uh, as Mike mentioned, uh, we do have uh, a PV forecasting and load forecasting uh, function in there. So the boundary are changed based on available uh, assets, available uh, sources. Okay, uh, any more questions? Any comment from Mario, Madiana, and Richard? Well, uh, Fred, let me say, uh, for First of all, congratulations, you know, for this uh, excellent, excellent project, you know, for you and for the entire team. And it has been really a pleasure, you know, to work with all of you, you know, during these years. And well, now is, uh, you know, you are just facing the next step of the project, you know, so um, I really, you know, um, wish you all the best, you know, with uh, uh, is next step that is always, you know, so difficult, you know, with the, uh, yes, bringing, you know, the technology to market and being successful, you know, there, but this is our, you know, main intention, as you know, and, and, and we will be here to help you as much as possible as always, you know, so again, you know, thank you very much, Fred and the entire team, you know, for this excellent project and well, and yes, happy holidays, you know, to everyone. Yeah, thank you, Mario. Thanks, everyone. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we are already passing uh, 1130, uh, so we probably will end here. If you have any questions, uh, again, feel free to contact us, like Mario said. Now, uh, this project is ending. We do have the technology that can be shared uh, with uh, uh, industry, so uh, feel free to contact us if you are interested. With that uh, said, and uh, happy holiday to everyone. Uh, I think we will stop here. Bye.